today on Rappler. From 2.5 million pesos to 60 million pesos, Vice President Judge Marbini releases his net worth over the span of 25 years. President Benigno Aquino defends Philippine Police Chief Alan Purisimo from corruption charges. And India makes history as its space probe successfully reaches the planet Mars. Hello, I'm Natasha Vitieres. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Vice President Jajamar Binay insists every single peso to his name and all of his properties are accounted for. Binay releases his Statements of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth, or SALN, from 1988 to 2013. As of 2013, Binay and his wife Elenita declared a net worth of more than 60 million pesos or $1.4 million. This is a huge leap from their declared net worth of more than 2.5 million pesos or almost $57,000 when Binay became mayor of Makati in 1988. The Binays have 11 real properties amounting to 13.9 million pesos or more than $312,000 thousand dollars to their name a house and lot in san antonio village makati worth around 7.1 million pesos or almost 160 thousand dollars and nine other residential lots in agricultural land based on the documents binay's income grew via private businesses outside of his government salary binay's cash cow was jcb farms a piggery business in batangas bringing in 44.4 million pesos from 1994 to 2010 Binay's wife, Elenita, also ran a flower shop business sourcing its products from a flower farm in the same area. Binay's legal counsel, Martin Subido, says as of 2014, Binay's only source of income is his salary and his wife's blooms and bouquet flower business. After winning the vice presidency in 2010, Binay divested from his piggery business. That same year, Binay reported more than 13.5 million pesos in excess campaign contributions, increasing his net worth from 44.8 million pesos in 2009 to 58 million pesos by the end of 2010. Binay's critics accuse him of getting a 13% kickback for every city project. Public funds were also supposedly used to finance their campaigns during the 2010 elections. Binay spokesperson John Vic Remulia says they have yet to clarify if excess campaign donations are considerable are considered taxable income. Remulia says Binay is willing to submit to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Uh, the children should answer that, but they are very, very ready. And that is as required by law uh, in compliance with the law. And there should be another time that they will answer it than when they are present. But this is uh, in response to the vice president answering a question na sabi, are you ready for a lifestyle check? Sabi niya, anytime, saya, nauna na kami. Remulia says Binay's style ends and income tax returns were released to the public in the spirit of leadership by example. Confident siya and willing to be scrutinized uh, bagay niya. Vice President Judge Omar Binay announces Wednesday the United Nationalist Alliance or UNA coalition will turn into a political party for his 2016 presidential bid. UNA is an alliance between the Puerto ng Masang Pilipino of former President Joseph Estrada and Binay's Partido Democratico Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban. Binay also expects to expand UNA to include members of the Nationalista Party and the Nationalist People's Coalition. Binay's spokesman Cavite Governor John Vic Remulia is from NP, while another ally Valenzuela Representative Sherwin Gachalian is from NPC. It was a show of force for Binay. The announcement happens a day before the Senate holds another hearing on an allegedly overpriced Makati parking building. The building is the subject of a plunder complaint against Binay and his son, Makati Mayor Junjun Binay. Back in March, Binay announced his resignation from PDP Laban because of internal problems. The party was co-founded by the Pimentels, Senator Aquilino Pimentel and his son, Senator Coco Pimentel, who are now at odds with the vice president. Interim UNA President and Navotas Representative Toby Tianco says the coalition will register with the Commission on Elections as a formal political party. UNA co-founder Estrada will remain with PMP. His son, Senator J.V. Ejercito, will also be part of UNA but was not at the organizational meeting. Senator Grace Poe on Wednesday says Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Alan Purisima should go on administrative leave 
pending the investigation of graft, plunder, and indirect bribery complaints against him. Post says the allegations tend to drag the entire police force down, whether the charges are true or false. But President Benigno Aquino comes to Purisima's defense, saying he's known Purisima for a long time and vouches for his character. In a graft complaint filed Monday, the Coalition of Filipino Consumers, or CFC, says Purisima was not truthful in declaring the value of his Nueva Ecija residence at only 3.75 million pesos, or about $70,000. The group says the house and lot costs around 30 million pesos to 50 million pesos. CFC also files plunder and indirect bribery charges against Purisima for his house inside Camp Crame. The PNP earlier said the building's renovation, which amounted to 12 million pesos, or about $270,000, was funded with the help of Purisima's Mason friends. Leaders from all over the world speak at the UN Climate Summit in New York. Philippine President Benigno Aquino highlights how his administration addresses climate change, but says the country needs funds and technology to handle extreme weather. Ai Makarig files this video blog. The Philippines bears the burden of climate change. This is a message of President Benigno Aquino III as he addresses the UN Climate Summit here in New York, the largest gathering of world leaders on the issue. Aquino calls on the international community to give the Philippines funds and technology to help it pursue clean growth while adapting to extreme weather events like Super Typhoon Haiyan. The president does not make any new commitments but highlights his government's efforts in disaster response and resilience. As early as 2008, we have passed a Renewable Energy Act and we are now treading a climate smart development pathway. We continue to take steps to maintain and even improve our low emission development strategy and the trajectory of our energy mix. And we are hopeful that our fellow developing nations, especially those who have been gaining the economic wherewithal to pursue similar strategies, will tread the path akin to ours. Environmental groups criticize Aquino for a supposedly misleading speech. They say instead of investing in renewable energy, his government approved 40 coal plants in the pipeline. U.S. President Barack Obama also addresses the summit, acknowledging the responsibility of the world's largest economy and second biggest greenhouse gas emitter. But Obama says both developing and developed nations must act. But let me be honest, none of this is without controversy. In each of our countries, there are interests that will be resistant to action. And in each country, there is a suspicion that if we act and other countries don't, that we will be at an economic disadvantage. But we have to lead. That is what the United Nations and this General Assembly is about. After this summit, it's crucial to see whether or not the commitments are reflected in a draft agreement in Lima in 2014 and in the final deal in Paris in 2015. For vulnerable countries like the Philippines, climate change is not just a topic of negotiations and talks like this one, but also a matter of survival. Ayi Makraig, Rappler, United Nations. An official from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, says Southeast Asian countries and China should look beyond their maritime disputes and help each other out in the face of disasters. ASEAN Secretariat Director Danny Lee says the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea dispute is one aspect of a multifaceted relationship between Southeast Asian countries and China. Lee adds sharing of information is very important. China Radio International Vice President Xia Jishuan says the Philippines and China in particular need to help each other respond to disasters. He says, quote, tsunamis and typhoons are common disasters for both countries. While both Li and Xia call for stronger ties beyond the South China Sea dispute, cooperation disasters is not new for the Philippines and China. When Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally known as Yolanda, ravaged the central Philippines in November 2013, China sent a floating naval facility to treat 6,000 of those in hard-hit areas. In 2004, the two countries also signed a defense cooperation agreement to strengthen exchanges in fields of counterterrorism, humanitarian relief, and rescue. World leaders at the United Nations on Wednesday turned their attention to the U.S.-led campaign to root out jihadists in the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS. Branded a terrorist organization by the U.S. and the U.N., ISIS controls large swaths of territory in Iraq and Syria and has beheaded two U.S. journalists and a British aid worker. 
A special UN Secu Security Council meeting seeks to pass a resolution among member nations making it a serious crime to join the jihad. U.S. President Barack Obama chairs the meeting. About 12,000 foreign fighters traveled to Syria and Iraq from 74 countries, while the U.S. found allies in Arab states Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar and Jordan as they fight alongside the U.S. military operation in Syria. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, estimate up to 1.4 million people in Liberia and Sierra Leone could become infected with Ebola by January 2015. The estimate is based on the assumption that the figures in Ebola cases are underreported by a factor of 2.5. But the CDC adds the report is based on data from August and does not reflect current conditions. The World Health Organization, or WHO, also releases a report Tuesday saying new cases would increase from hundreds each week to thousands without drastic improvements in control measures. Infections are projected to go up to 20,000 by November. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 2, a U.S. court sentenced Osama bin Laden's son-in-law and former Al-Qaeda spokesman Suleiman Abu Ghaif to life in prison Tuesday for plotting to kill Americans and supporting terrorists involved in the 9-11 attacks in 2001, when four hijacked planes were flown into the World Trade Center in New York City, the Pentagon, and the field in Pennsylvania. Almost 3,000 people were killed in the deadliest attack on U.S. soil. Gaith is the highest-ranking al-Qaeda leader ever held in a prison in the U.S. And at number 10, Philippine clothing mega-brand Bench issues an apology for offensive elements in its The Naked Truth fashion show last Saturday. The apology came after a public backlash over the show's disrespect for women. Among other elements, the show featured actor Coco Martin walking on stage with women on a leash on all fours. Bench says, quote, it will serve as a lesson learned when we plan our next show. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. India makes history as the first nation to reach the planet Mars on its first attempt Wednesday. Its low-cost Mangalyaan spacecraft successfully entered orbit around the red planet after a 10-month journey. India joins the United States, Russia and Europe, countries and regions that successfully reached Mars. More than half of all missions to Mars ended in failure, including China's in 2011 and Japan's in 2003. The Mangalyan probe is expected to study the planet's surface and scan its atmosphere for methane, which could provide evidence of any life form. The probe is expected to circle Mars for six months, about 500 kilometers or 310 miles from its surface. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. Okay, I see one, two, three, four, five different colors on the mood navigator today. Let's check out this sole purple circle on the left. BNI turns UNA into political party for 2016. This was in our newscast today. 58% of readers say they're annoyed about this news, while 28% are angry. Over here to the right. You may now board Quezon City e-jeepneys. Great news, this has 84% of people feeling happy, 9% are inspired, and 4% are amused. And lastly, right in the middle, stalwarts of Kowanko party throw support behind Binay. Kowanko, of course, is related to the president. This has 71% of people feeling happy, 21% are angry, and 5% are annoyed. All these stories contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, September 24, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.